Howdy, I'm Joshua Fields Milburn. And I'm Ryan Nicodemus, and together we are The Minimalists. Welcome back to Living Room Conversations. We're here in my, well, my dining room. So, I guess it's a dining room conversation. <laughs> anyway, we're answering your questions here on Living Room Conversations. Leave them in the comments below. Ryan, today's question is from Moonlight. And she says, this makes me worry. I started being interested in minimalism exactly a year ago and recently achieved my goal hmm. of minimizing things. But for some reason now, I feel very empty. What did I do wrong? Oh. Well, first of all, I'm sorry to hear that. I mean, I think sometimes we often have unrealistic expectations that uh, whatever we're trying to do, whether it's minimalism or a new diet or an exercise routine or a new place to move to or a new job or career path or maybe we're going to finish this next project, whatever it might be, we think it's going to be the panacea for all of our problems. Yeah. But often <sighs> it's not the panacea. In fact, when we think it, because the, the thing that stands out from Moonlight's question, Ryan, is... Uh, I reached my goal. Yeah. If the goal was minimalism, it was probably the wrong goal. Well, it sounds like it was it was even more specific than minimalism. The goal was to minimize. Ah. And now clearing the clutter certainly is the first step of, of a minimalist journey, or it's most people's first step. Right. But if that's the end goal, um, it almost seems like maybe Moonlight was using this as a distraction from something. Oh. Uh, if she's feeling, or if they're feeling empty right now, I would, I would, I would suggest to you to really write down what it is you value in your life. Get clear on what your values are. Now, Josh and I got a nice worksheet that you can uh, download over at theminimalists.com forward slash V as in values. Yeah. So, so getting clear on there and then you can kind of look at, okay, here's what I value. Also, here's. A, a part of my values that I'm not paying attention to it because that's really where the emptiness is coming from. It's not coming from an empty apartment. I mean, yes, an empty apartment uh, will certainly provide a situation for someone to sit around and sulk when they have nothing in their apartment. Sure. Uh, because there are some things that we actually do value, but there's other things uh, that I think you should pay attention to with your minimalism journey. Um, I, I want to say moonlighting maybe started off wrong because where we suggest people to start is really getting clear on the benefits of minimalism and why they want to go down this journey. Right. And if the only reason why was to get rid of things, then it's not super surprising that that's where Moonlight is right now. Yeah, I mean, I'm often thinking that you, you buy a hammer to fix things. Mm -hmm. You don't buy the tool, the hammer in this instance, to have the tool. Yeah. And, and I think sometimes what we do is we, we confuse the tool or the the vehicle with the destination. Mm. The vehicle is supposed to get you to your destination, mm -hmm. but it is not the destination itself. You buy the car, you rent the car, not to say you've rented the car, but so it can take you to where you are going. Yeah, I, I, yeah minimalism is this tool that helps us, I agree, to get to this destination. It helps us to clear the clutter from our lives so we can focus on what is most important. And when you focus on what is most important, like that is where living a meaningful life, I think, happens. When, when your, your short-term actions are aligning with those long-term uh, values, those long-term beliefs, uh, but, but just becoming a minimalist doesn't lead to happiness. It, it, I think it uh, paves the way. Mm for happiness, or, so, or for a meaningful life, I should say. So here's the thing, Moonlight is now sitting in an empty room yeah. and feeling empty. But I want you to realize something, you are complete in an empty room, and now you have an option. What am I going to fill this space with that is going to serve a purpose? What's gonna augment or enhance my experience of life? We don't have to feel compelled to fill every corner of our homes just because there is a nook or a cranny, or a walk-in closet, or a spare bedroom, or a basement, or an attic, or a garage that can be filled with stuff, uh, that doesn't just need to be filled with stuff. Yeah. The question is, what are the things that are gonna serve a purpose in your life now? And, the, and Ryan, to your point, the only way you're going to know what tools you need is if you know where you are going. So figure out 
the direction in which you are headed. Mm -hmm. And you're going to stop feeling empty if you have a purpose behind where you are going. Yeah. And again, Moonlight, like you're going to use your values. You're going to get clear on those because that's going to be your compass. That's going to help you determine what you should bring back into your life. You know, if you get rid of all your spoons, bring a spoon back in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, you can get really clear on those values. The Ryan mentioned, mentioned the worksheet. Uh, there's also an essay there called How to Understand Your Values at theminimalists.com slash V. If you have more questions for Living Room Conversations, you can leave them in the comments below. Also, Ryan and I are getting ready to go on tour again. We're coming to a city near you with a live version of The Minimalist Podcast. You can find the closest city at theminimalists.com slash tour. All right, y'all. Love people. Use things. We'll see you next time. See ya. The Minimalists.